I was inspired to do this project by the book The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. In the story, the chameleon hops on different objects and his body changes to the color that he is resting on. So in this project, we're going to paint a background and paint another piece of paper for our lizard. If you don't have two pieces of paper, you certainly could paint one and cut your painting in half. I'm going to first demonstrate how to do a wet on wet watercolor background. So I'm going to use a large brush and wet my entire paper with water. And then once my paper is wet, I'm going to use my watercolors on top of the wet paper. When you use a wet on wet technique, your color spread and bleed a bit more. If you don't have watercolor paints at home, you could use some water-based washable markers, color your entire paper with that, and then use your paintbrush and water to wet them and turn them into watercolors. If you have the watercolor paints, you can use those on top of your wet paper and you can see how it bleeds nicely. If you have two pieces of watercolor paper to do the project, one for the background and one for the lizard, try to paint your two background pieces similar so that when you cut your lizard, you can hide your lizard within your background. When you do the wet on wet watercolor technique, you also have the paper working with you to spread the colors into one another. So you can paint your colors with a little separation in between them and they will bleed and blend into each other. And if you choose to use brown or black in your painting, just remember to use them sparingly. If you use a lot of brown or black, they probably will spread and make your whole painting all one color. So experiment with your colors, decide where you want to place things. And when you think you're done, another interesting technique to do on a wet on wet watercolor paper is to add some coarse salt to your painting. The coarse salt absorbs some of the color leaving little pebbles or spaces in your painting. So on my finished one, that's how I got all those little marks. So I'm gonna take some coarse salt and I'm gonna sprinkle it on my painting. And you might be able to see already that it is absorbing some of the color in the salt. So when I brush that salt off when my paintings dry, those little spaces where the salt are are going to appear a little later. I'm gonna move my painting and my newspaper out of the way so I can show you the next part of the project. So as I said, you need to have two paintings to do the project or one painting that you could cut in half. And you're going to be creating a lizard on your second piece of paper that you could then move around on your paper to decide where you think he is hidden the most. Your lizard can either have two legs or four legs, depending on how complicated you'd like to make your cutting. And it also could have a very tight spiral or a loose spiral, depending on your cutting skills. 
in order to draw your lizard on the back of one of your paintings, you're going to draw some simple shapes. I've outlined them with a marker so that you can see what shapes I used to make my lizard. So a semicircle for your lizard's body. You could trace something that's circular and just cut it in half. A small circle for his head overlapping the semicircle. A triangle for the end of his head or his nose and mouth. A triangle at the top for his horn. Some rectangles for his legs. If you want his leg to be bent, then put two rectangles together overlapping. And a simple zigzag line makes an interesting foot. And then add your spiral line for your tail at the end. Again, if you are having a hard time cutting, you might want to make that spiral a little bit easier to cut and a little bit looser. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out my lizard. When you cut, try to get rid of some of the excess paper first before you worry about getting in between all of the pieces. So I find if I go all the way around my shape on the outside, I've gotten rid of a lot of that excess paper. Now I can go back in and cut my shapes. And we want to add a mouth to our lizard. We forgot that part. So I'm going to cut a mouth at the end. And you could adjust some of those shapes. If you decide you made too large a triangle, you can make it a little bit smaller. And remember, you can always go from the outside of your paper in and then across to make those pieces fall out a little easier. The hardest part will be cutting the spiral. You might need to ask a parent to help you with that. Come in from the other side of my spiral. And once I've connected those two lines, I can pull out my cut piece. So now I have my lizard ready to glue onto one of my background paintings. Since I had one of these ready, I'm going to demonstrate with one of those for you. So again, move your lizard around until you think you have a spot where he is hidden the most. Experiment with where you're placing him. He doesn't have to be placed vertically or horizontally. He can be placed on a diagonal. I think I like my lizard right there. I'm going to take some glue and add some glue to the back of my lizard. Oh, I forgot to cut his mouth out. Just need enough drops of glue on the parts to hold him. You don't have to have a lot. And then I'm going to position my lizard back where I had him and press him down. And now I have my finished hidden chameleon. I hope you enjoyed that project. I can't wait to see yours.